momentary disclaimer to proffer before I venture any further with today's musings. Today's rant is exceptionally self-serving and personally indulgent. I fully recognize and acknowledge that 99.9% .9 of my audience and regular viewership has little to flat zero interest in the 80s metal band Doc and its back catalog or the ongoing war of egos that's characterized their recent history. Having once acceded these facts, I will now continue to rant. If you don't care for it, it's my sincere hope that you hover your cursor over the back button on your browser and let your index finger and gravity do the fucking rest. Dokken is one of my favorite heavy metal bands. Top five easily. Don Dokken is probably my favorite singer of all time, and guitarist George Lynch, despite many of the grievances I'll soon regale you with, remains one of the great unsung guitar heroes in all of heavy metal. A temperamental genius, but a genius nonetheless. How appropriate, then, that it's from these two central, inimitably talented individuals that the core conflict that perpetually swirls around this band inevitably arises. You've heard the tale in every tongue by now. A singer and a guitarist who make great music and hate each other's fucking guts, incidentally. Axel and Slash, Plant and Page, Udo Dirk Schneider and Wolf Hoffman from Accept, the singer's a prima donna accustomed to getting his own way while supposedly contributing little of creative import, while the guitarist inevitably wishes he could just fucking sing and in so doing quintuple the mass of his already Alpha Centauri-sized ego. And I recognize that there are just some blathering dipshits, and if Tumblr's any indication of fucking a lot of them, to be honest, who listen to Dawkins strictly for George Lynch's guitar playing and say fuck you to the rest of the band because it's too cheesy, and to that all-too-common half-wit opinion I can say only right back at ya, assload, I strongly challenge the contention that George Lynch today is the immutable genius 15-year-olds proclaimed him to be in 1987, and I don't even feel the need to bolster that contention, as the man's recent output seems to fulfill that function more than sufficiently. Souls of We is the kind of band a washed-up rock star would have formed in 1998 in order to appear sufficiently edgy to the darkest, most disaffected elements of the local junior high school. And lest we forget the leisurely new metal affectations of Lynch Biscuit's 1999 masterstroke, Smoke This. Yeah, judging by your 58-year-old Vince McMahon physique and the fact that you can bend forks with your fucking face, perhaps the album should be entitled Inject This. He's not tortured in deep people. George Lynch simply finds himself in the unenviable position of being an 80s guitar hero who, for some inexplicable reason, insists on being permanently lodged in the 90s. I mean, what the fuck? Isn't that like Queen refusing to play anything from before Freddie Mercury died? I suppose it's just as well, since the 90s is apparently the only decade that just outright refuses to fucking end. But either way, his recent lynch mob, TNN, and Souls of We offerings are monuments to mediocrity, which would be considerably less noticeable if Don's version of Dokken hadn't just released two of the best albums of their motherfucking career back to back. John Levin is playing Lynch's guitar parts better than he has in like 20 fucking years. <laughs> The butt-fucking-awful music I could excuse, but for the steady stream of horseshit excuses for why he isn't working with Dokken anymore, when the simple fact is that George Lynch can barely get along with George Lynch, let alone anyone fucking else. Oh, I'll never work with Don Dokken again. He's a drug addict with a substance abuse problem, says Lynch, with syringes protruding from his ass, five minutes before appearing on stage with his new singer, Oni Logan, who's so tits-up, full-on, shit-faced drunk, he literally fell on his ass and shit himself on stage during the one and only lynch mob concert I've ever attended in my fucking life. This man's rehab sponsor has a rehab sponsor. Consider that bullet not fucking dodged, my friend. I actually met the man last year at a guitar clinic he held in downtown Phoenix. You can accurately surmise within the first 10 seconds of conversation that he is the biggest throbbing member in contemporary music, yet he insists on maintaining this 
fabricated air of mock civility all the same when you know just beneath the veneer he's envisioning new and exciting ways to throttle you in your fucking sleep. Which after enduring 25 minutes of Lynch fondling his fretboard like Michelangelo Batio with half the talent would be a welcome fucking release. Would I like to see the classic lineup of, you know, Pilsen, Doc, and Brown, and Lynch don the hot pink Arsenio Hall leisure suits and give it one more go? Sure I fucking would. But George, this is imperative. In order for that to happen, you need to shut the fuck up. None of this Don Dockin boils kittens alive to extract their souls talk, and let's not let Sebastian Bach ever sing a Dockin song ever again while you're at it. And let's endeavor to keep those performance-enhancing supplements in check, shall we? You don't need buns of steel to play guitar. L look at Ingve Malmsteen for crying out loud. He gets by with buns of cinnamon. I'm Razor Fist. God fucking speed.